All right, check one, check two. This is it. Welcome to the Cannabis Coffee Hour. With your host, me, Rob Cantrell, coming back with an exciting episode, an exciting guest, a dope guest. This guy is uh, one of my dear friends from stand-up days here in New York City. He's still performing stand-up, but he was the executive writer and producer of the Eric Andre show for the last five seasons. And he just has written a book. He's in town. He flew in from L.A. yesterday, and his legs are tired. <laughs> and um, uh, give it up for my man, Mr. Dan Curry, everybody. Hey, what's up, everybody? <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> here at Shapeshifter Lab, a jazz club. I'm here with Dan Curry for the Cannabis Coffee Hour. Uh, he also wrote the movie Bad Trip as well, uh-huh. which was a good movie. Was it? Yes. Yeah. It was number one on Netflix. I think I ran it and loved it. Dan was on one of the original episodes. I think we're at 245, but he was very early on and during Deep in the Pandemic. Uh, Dan was cool enough to step into the uh, Cannabis Coffee Hour zone. Now, I did get you a coffee, Dan. Can you talk about the coffee and your coffee preference? I normally like an iced Americano is is my is my typical. That's my that's my uh, vodka up like James Bond. Yes. It's iced Americano, though. Uh, I mean, if you're going into a big meeting or you got to take your car in, you yeah. got to have. A, if you're taking business, ice Americano. And in the afternoons, I'll I'll even do like a, a naturally decaffeinated iced Americano. Ooh! But you got to do you know natural. You know the difference between natural decaf and store bought. Dude, decaf. this dude always hits me. He was the first dude to hit me to the Aero Press. Yeah. I don't know about the, you know he's in L. A. He's making moves. Uh, but I don't know about naturally decaffeinated, and I'm interested. Right, I'm now, doing kombucha, my man, on the afternoon. But yeah, yeah, kombucha yeah. on the afternoon, great. Yes. But hear this. Hear me out. Hear it out. Decaffeinated coffee that you get at a grocery store that just says decaffeinated, how they decaffeinate it is with like a chemical. And I'm, I'm being, like, I don't know the specific names of it. You can look this up. Yeah. So it's a chemical extraction, and that's why it's at market the same price as uh, regular coffee. But naturally decaffeinated is a process where they put the beans and they run cold water over it for like f- between 48 hours and like a week. Wash and it. And it's, an, and it's an extensive process that draws the caffeine out. Mm-hmm. And then you have still the whole food, just no caffeine. And it's more expensive. So the, the corporations don't invest in that. But, you know, mom and pop. Most operations, the like quality coffee operations, their decaf will be naturally decaffeinated. Straight, yeah. You got to get it from the street. You got to get the decaf from the small small business. We're here. We love small business. I'm all about small yeah, business. Yeah, decaf is small business. You yeah. got like to get the right kind of decaf. You can't go big business with a decaf. You can't go. Uh, Sorry, you know, the the Maxwell House, the Folgers. Yeah, they'll they, dump whatever in it. Oh, dude, they're dr- they got Clorox and they're Clorox in that caffeine out, dude. Dude, you know what I'm into now? What do you What are you rocking these days, Dad? Like uh, European FDA. Like their standards are better than ours. They're like, dude, there's like tons of shit that we shouldn't be eating yeah. here. Like oh, the Skittles. Tons. I read about the Skittles a year ago, Halloween. Play to the camera in me. That's the. I know it's a little Play weird. Play to the camera I'm in not, you. Yeah, I know it's a little awkward. But yeah, tell me about the Skittles, my man. So the Skittles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a chemical in Skittles. I wish I was more. I didn't come prepared. I'm just riffing on no, stuff. No, this is what the this cannabis is all, but This is all verifiable information. There's a chemical you always that gives the, the shine, shit. the shine of Skittles. Yeah. The actual shine is a chemical banned in food in the European Union. Because they got the whatever they don't call it the FDA, but their FDA is just higher end. Yes, you know what I mean. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. it's Euro. <laughs> it's Euro. Yeah, America will let them slide. End. Yeah, yeah, we like, let shit. Sl- you know, America, we let shit. They're slide. not owned by corn farmers and yeah. shit. And, and pig subsidies, whatever. They're not yeah. owned by that. Uh, so they're owned by other stuff. Like they're. I'm sure you could do a deep dive and find that they're imperfect, but they do ban. I'm into the chemicals they ban. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, I trust they got them a higher more. Than, no, and you're yeah. talking to Mr. As I said on this podcast, in my heart, I'm a hippy dippy sun child. I want to go upstate and live in a tree and grow kombucha and, 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 and play my guitar. So inside of me, yes, 
everything like vegetables i want small business i, I just yeah. think it's down to and even now i'm just more about smoothies and soups <laughs> smoothies and soups i just it, just in terms of getting like cheeseburgers out there and like talk just, just it, the, the corporation food has gotten funky and too big so you just can't trust it i can't trust corporate food no I, mean, I go to the farmer's market Yo, I All love a good farmer's. Oh, on we got Sunday in Atwater. I live in uh, L.A. Atwater Village. Shout out Atwater Village to farmers the farmers market. market. Like, I guess where I get my my sourdough. Oh, that's where I get my berries, grapes, all types of fruits, my greens. I get it there. California is next I, level on greens and sourdough. Next. Is it from San Francisco actually, or do they, I the don't LA? think it has to be from San Francisco. No. It's just the process. But they got it close by. Yeah, there's a guy. There's a there, guy. There's a guy. He he and he and he sells bread and he and he calls it the the kind I get. He calls it the kids sourdough. Mm. He's always trying to upsell to get people to get the super sourdough. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't go for it. No. I go this one toasts better. But he but he's like he's against me on a thing I buy on him. What about know. the? Does it have the white powder on the crust? You know, when the when you get the bread, no it's got the powder. <laughs> no, no, this one. Sourdough is more of a light toast. It's a like, light toast. Yeah, it's a light on the out. I'm talking about the outside of a bread loaf. Uh, sourdough is classically a light toast, but you, I remember you, we were talking about sourdough bread, and you say, "Isn't this true? The best grilled cheese is on." Sourdough. Sourdough bread all day. Tell Groyer. me about your grill. Groyer. Yeah. Break right? down your and grilled like, cheese. Dan has the best grilled gr cheese game Groyer ever. Groyer cheese. And what you oh do is God. you put a couple pats of butter and you leave it out to get room temperature and then spread it on the, the slices pre. Right. Then shred up the Groyer as you put the, uh, the, the bread butter side down on a medium pan, cast mm -hmm. iron. Put the Gruyere on, top it with the other one with the butter on top, and then flip it after a minute or two, and it, the toast on it. It's, <gasps> it's perfection. And I got my kids into that. Yes. But yes. That's, that's a different story. But, uh, <laughs> it, I, I'm telling you, the best grilled cheese game, I remember him explaining that. I don't, I, I don't even know where to get Gruyere. But I think it's out there. Gruyere? In it's the, almost. It's exactly. in the special cheese. It, like in a grocery store, they got like corporate cheese. Yeah. And then they got like the specialty, like Euro section. Yeah, that's not every grocery store. Ha but I don't know. No, no, I'm, no, no. I just I'm in. I like Gruyere. I, a, my grilled. Che I would do it. I would. I, around here they got the Vermont cheddar. You know, you they're all about the extra sharp Vermont cheddar. Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah, that's not your brand. I grew up around that. That was the the cheese du jour. Yeah, Dan and, is from upstate New York. Yes. Albany, right? Clifton Park. But Clifton yeah, Park. Right shout out Albany. Clifton Park. No shout out. To yeah, Clifton I know Park. you. No, you got to shout no, out hometown. No, no. Hometown. Uh, I thought the, the region. He had some shout out to the Albany area. He had some trauma in his childhood up there, but he's uh, yeah. Uh, everyone has tra trauma. Yeah, everybody has. Everybody a, has trauma from where they're from. Their hometown. Yeah, their hometown. Yeah, yeah. That's a part of the gig, man. That's a part of life. Uh, but a shout out, but they you had too much Vermont cheddar. Yeah, yeah that was like so regular for Vermont you. Vermont cheddar was like, and New York cheddar, which yeah. is the same. There's a, there's some similarities. Like the thing I get into is maple syrup. Ooh. Now there's only there's three major. There's one major maple syrup produ uh, producing area. That's Quebec. It's eighty percent of the world's reserves mm. of, of maple syrup or in and around that. I did not know that. Then the next ten percent is New York State. Five percent or something, and then, and then, or it's New York and Vermont. But New York and Vermont pretty much fill up the rest of that twenty percent. And the maple syrup in New York and Vermont is better. Yes, like uh, farm to farm. Yeah, I, I, as long the, like we were talking before, like I never thought I would end up being a New Yorker. I came here in two thousand five, but now it's two thousand twenty three. But I do love the state of New York. They got great produce and they got great outdoors upstate. They got great cheese. They got great farm. They got great cannabis. We just sampled a Hudson cannabis, which is like the most outdoor grown. This is what was making cheese back when you were little. Those farms are now growing cannabis up there, and oh, it's all Hudson? regulated. Yeah. Oh. That's what that's from. It's all upstate farmers that are doing. That's like the super. I got it from a dispensary. Shout out uh, Housing Works. But, uh, yeah, yeah, cheese is, uh, you know, New York just had some, I'm just saying upstate is a lot more country than you would think like that it yeah. has great outdoors great places to get maple syrup i mean to use the the colloquialism it's it's 
almost a, it's like a red state almost i know you always talk about this yeah but it, didn't but the hillary state, clinton was the democrat she was the state yeah, senate but the city carries her yeah that's true she's a state the city the city has a huge weight in yeah. the electorate yes you know so it's like but yeah upstate's pretty it, it's different like it, like new york wasn't culture shock because new york's new york yes like so i always knew new york was culture shock it's too meta yeah you know <laughs> i used to come down here when i was a kid yeah and i in like the 80s and the, the best way to lo- describe new york in the 80s was uh now i'm getting into a mixed metaphor here but yes. it's uh in the Guns N' Roses video, Appetite for uh, uh, Welcome to the Jungle, in the beginning, Axl Rose gets off a bus and lands in Hollywood, and he's got, like, a straw in his mouth. The Hacy, totally. Comes off that the was Greyhound me. bus. That was me in the 80s in New York. Dude, I was that like, was oh me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I was terrified. You're going to die. Yeah. I came down like, I was, It was too many people. It was, like, it was a mess, and, like, I, the, the attitude was, like, was like higher back then. Oh yeah, it was a, a totally uh, adult playland. From being at from DC, everybody was like New York. That's where people do coke. You can get drugs everywhere. There's prostitution at 42nd. It was a dangerous adult place yeah. uh, that moved super fast. Like nowadays, it's all baby strollers. Like I would say New York City is ten times safer. But yeah, just to give it a little bit more explanation in 3D, Dan grew up upstate. And he's outside of Albany, so growing up, he would say he was from New York, and people go, "Oh, New York City." Yeah, but he no, was always from. He couldn't claim you, it, so it always play, gave you, you a little you weirdness. Can't, you can't. Any, it's for everybody up it's there. It's for you everybody. You can't say I'm from New York. Yeah. If you're from the state of New York. You yeah. Like Long Island people do it, but I'm like, you're from Long Island. Yeah. Like I'm like, nah, you're not. Like you, you get it, you get to. Like yeah. I, I like unless you're in the borough, bur- uh, what I've learned, unless you're one of the five boroughs, yeah. you can claim New York City. And even then you got to say, oh, I'm from Brooklyn or I'm from Queens. Yeah. People get like New York City. People get so upset about it. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I never said it, though, because, yeah. because I was like, I know I have to say ups- I have to prep- preface it. If you're from if you're from the upper peninsula of Michigan. You have, have you have to say the UP. You have to claim it. You got to go up Michigan, UP. Like most people in yeah. Michigan are from like the. Uh, and before we get going, Dan, because you and I are such good friends, like it's almost unnatural. But this is an interview for the Cannabis Coffee Hour right. podcast going out to the world wide web uh, and beyond. But he just released a book. It's called Here. Dumb Ideas with Eric Andre. It's a bunch of beautiful essays we wrote about our times. Doing the Eric Andre show, you can flip through it. It's good for the. It's good for. Um, <laughs> I love it. It oh breaks God. down. Uh, it, there's all these scripts from the Eric Andre yeah, show, which is scripts. a wild. It, 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 we're talking jazz. We're here at Shapeshifters uh, Lab, which is a jazz club, which is right up the alley of uh, Dan Curry and uh, Eric Andre. Their art should be uh, talked about in a jazz format because it's it's a little bit... You, you guys always had an all-over style. Yeah, the book's all over, but in a good way. I think it's episodic. You know, what happened was we we, we were going to do this thing called like a prank cookbook and we were writing all these pranks <laughs> in the pandemic and then I had like a meltdown. Like I was like, this is like kind of not saying much. There's like no risk. Yeah. You know, we can't do anything. So I was like, like what, I started writing essays. essays. I'm like, maybe we'll have essays introduce things. But then the essays kind of took over. And then we just kind of had fun sharing stories and stuff and going back and forth. You know, like, and there's, thing, there's like things that he did that I'm like, like, you got to put on wax. Like the time he almost got killed. <laughs> making bad trip with Lil Rel. Yeah, t- can you give us an abbreviated version of uh, Almost Getting Killed on I had, set I of had, the movie? And Dan, was the, were you the director? No, I wrote it with wrote Eric it. and developed it. You know, And was and one of the producers. Yeah, I, was, produce- I think I was, a, I, was like a, I was like bottom producer. Yeah. <laughs> Low producer, they call Dude, it. Dude, well, it's a major <laughs> hit film. That's okay. I'm pumping you up. But, no, uh, no, no, but uh, it was... Uh, I had this idea, I was like, you know, these guys should get their dicks stuck in a Chinese dick trap. You know yes. what I mean? Like, and I, and I just thought that was funny. <laughs> and that, that, it was just to get that in the movie. It was just like, I felt it was a battle. But um, they go into a barber shop. And when they go into the barber shop with their dicks attached, 
a guy, the barber, wasn't expecting it, pulled out a knife and like chased him out. And he was like, he was like, not. He could have stabbed him easily. But I encouraged Eric to tell a lot of these like stories that I think from behind the scenes that um, are fun for us to retell. You know, I wanted to be pretty genuine about that. Yeah, and it's a fast. I mean, the Eric Andre show, if you don't know, it's the most punk rock talk show in the history of talk shows. So it's all, it's 15 minutes of pure chaos and uh, mass confusion. Yeah. But uh, to have it documented into a book style, it has to be told. The story has to be told of the backstory of some of these times. I, Eric had five concussions, has almost been stabbed and thrown into he jail. He had five concussions. I don't know. I threw that out there. Did he have, he had no, he con- had no concussions? No concussions. He never got knocked to, out? To, to my knowledge. What about had, tooth? No tooth? No tooth. He got arrested. He got arrested. And, uh, and almost stabbed. Couple, almost stabbed. Okay. And then there's stuff that we don't even talk about. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's couple, got some of that. There's a couple that went away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't want that right. into the creepy internet, my man. We don't uh, want that. We, this is a Simon Schuster book. And uh, you've written before. I always I went to one of your book releases here in Park Slope years ago. Yeah, yeah. You remember that? So you've written books before. Yeah. Um, but this is the dumb ideas. <laughs> Am I playing to the right camera? You're playing to the right camera. All we right. had backup cameras. We had yeah. I've done a couple episodes today, so everything's running hot. Do I look like Roddy Roddy Piper a little? Like if you squint your you're eyes, you're jacked, like, dude. Uh yeah, you're gonna get jacked. You said you're gonna get. I'm gonna jacked. get. J- what, are I, well, lean, what are you doing? I do well. You know, I do my seven Tibetan stretches in the morning, which is like they sound whatever, but they're hardcore. Can you send me a link to it? The t- I seven think points? I have. You first do 19 spins, and you have to concentrate on one point. Right. And then you get on. You have to do them all in a row. And then you get on your back. I'm and already you do, not doing it. I'm not doing it. You get on your back and do 19 leg lifts. All the way down, but you have to take your legs over your head, back on your on your back. So your toes laying should, down. should touch behind you. You t- do that 19 times. Then you get on your knees and you do your neck. You do that. Kush, 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 kush. And then the next one is like a crab. You do like a crab and you pop it out. Boom, do that. And then you flip over and do a uh, downward dog. And it's there. They are kind of like the kung fu uh, push-ups. Or Mike Tyson had these push-ups. Where you kind of come from downward dog and you go, boom, boom. Like yeah. you're literally, yeah. Okay. And so it's supposedly it's uh, the Tibetan monks, like it's, it's called the fountain of youth. It's supposed to stretch out all of your nervous system and all of, so I do that every morning. All right, well, so and that's what I do right before. If it's going to do that, then I'll try it. Uh, but no, I want to. There is a boxing gym down the street. I know you, we talked about boxing. I like the speed bag. So my new thing is like, I'm going to get. Really good at doing the speed bag and pull-ups. I've been I, can't, I can't do pull-ups. My, I did something to my wrist, and it's just forget it. What about a I flex can't, arm I hang? I don't even do the pull-ups anymore. I'm doing a one-minute hang because I'm, you know, I'm Gen X to, you know, I'm up there. The one-minute hang, yeah. I do a one-minute hang. I do that three times. So I do one-minute hang, rest, one-minute hang, rest, one-minute hang. Yeah, I was, I was doing that for a minute, but I don't have a high enough uh, ceilings. Like my, my, my bar is too low. Yes. So, and so the like, knees. So I have to like bend my knees and I want to do like a dead hang. Yes. And so the knees adds to the exercise. The dead hang is what you're talking about. And it does feel like, don't you love stretching out the body? Yeah, yeah, I should. I, yeah, but my wrist is, is I, I can't. I can't. What I don't know. about yoga? Do you ever smoke and do yoga or stretch? Do you have a little yoga pad that you yeah, do I some have a stretches? Yoga pad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. I do. Like the big one is hip openers. Ooh, I, I saw, love a good hip opener. I saw on Instagram this guy. He's like, he's like, I'm 45. Check it out. And he's just like boing boing. He was like bouncing around. He goes, he was, and he was doing. Uh, We're squat. talking about he knees. Like, he was doing squats, but he was doing it like his his whole body was a spring. Yeah. And I'm like, I kind of, I, I can't go all the way there, but I get it. So I started. I do hip openers every day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. frog style. Like, Get down, uh, sit down like a frog, and back up. Yeah. What's the one? Uh, pigeon. Ooh. Pigeon pose is the one where you put your leg in front of you and one leg back, and you lean over it. Oh, and that's it a just, nice. and it just like hits it. Oh, that's a good. I gotta do a. I have a great yoga book. I gotta look at the uh, pigeon. You gotta do pigeon. Pigeon. I'm about. I, my downward dog is. I mean, uh, ridiculous. 
is great. And then my cobra is really good. But now I got to throw in my pigeon and get my pigeon in did there. Did you get a pigeon? I did. A, I did like a hot yoga once, and the guy was like a drill instructor, and I didn't like his style. Like right, was, right. Like because he was a drill instructor, but now, but he was too like, I didn't trust him. Right. He, he became like a yoga hippie. Like I found out a story later. But anyway, at the end of his like. 90 minute hot yoga i had to do pigeon i'm like we didn't do pigeon yeah i was like yeah i had to just do pigeon for like a minute on each side because i was like i'm not done you're born to be a director you told the yoga instructor oh, i didn't tell him you shit. didn't tell him no you did freestyle on no, your I own just didn't like it. i just didn't like his style because he goes yeah they all have their gave style. The option he was like well if you want to hang out and do a couple extra poses i'm like yeah yeah like you're making me have to because how do we do all how do we just do this for 90 minutes with no pigeon yeah i couldn't believe but i think I think yoga, the specifics of like what you do, the seven Tibetan ways, I've n- I, I always like just make up my own thing. Which yeah, is that's what I do too. But I want to try. I want to try this, but like I don't want to flip. Around. No, I don't, don't want to like break my back. You, the way you described it, it sounds like I have to be like an acrobat. No, no, you just have to have a yoga pad, and you and you don't have to do nineteen. You're supposed to start out. That nineteen's the top. You see, you're supposed to just try a couple, and it's just the. The, it's the gradual since just stretching out the whole nervous system. But uh, I'll send it to But at the same time, I'm the same way. Like I pick up stuff and I do deep knee bends. And then I also heard that uh, back pain is from butt talks. If you're butt talks, if you have a flat butt, you're going to get back pain. So you need to be working on your. So my new thing is I go get on all fours and I do the leg lift behind. And I do uh-huh. 10 of those. That's because I have this book that tells you everything like. Okay, for back pain, these are the three things. And squats are good for back pains. Squats, like, you gotta do squats. Gotta do squats. But do you do with the bar? Do you, you just do freestyle sports. Like the weight lift, when I gotta put that belt on, that's scary. I haven't done that stuff I, in I years. I don't go that hardcore with the squats. I mean, to me, I'm just like, it's maintenance. Yeah. You don't have to. Like, the I body do, is I, a I, temple. I use weights more now, I keep them out. But I don't make. I try to do total body. I don't. I don't. Have, I'm not a bodybuilder. I'm not trying to be like, nah. like chest and try back and body. <laughs> That's old school. Like, yeah. and it works. But like, I'm not trying to be like a jacked, like like that. No, we just need I a just core. Wanna, I want to be total. What I want to be is I don't want to be lacking in areas. Like right now, my hamstrings are always tight, and I have to, I have to do more. Mm-hmm. But hamstrings are the source of fear. So we, when I'm stretching my hamstrings, I get like, like I, I have a fear of it. Yeah, so we got so to drink a lot of water. Drink a lot of water and stre- stretch. Yeah, I get the same type of fear about my knees. I always watch all this stuff. That's why I'm always stretching now. And uh, yeah, man, the body is a trip. And the mind's a trip too. And uh, the older you get, the more you figure out how psyched you are that everything's working. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's... a. Uh, what about meditation? I know Eric Andre does meditation. I know you meditate. We worked on a tele. You got. He had me. He had a craft political party that we filmed in D.C. One of my favorite craft, t- punk, yeah. craft punk political party, which was awesome. Uh, but you were med- you were you were running the show and you were meditating during that time as well. I was meditating at that time. Oh yeah, I was doing it a lot more then. But yeah, I do. Um I do most days in the morning. Yeah, it's hard to keep it. Yeah, like, nobody's I need, perfect. I don't need to do that twice a day thing. That's like, I mean, I'm not saying it, like, it does wonders, I'm sure, for people. But like, I, I prefer, what I'm trying to do now is take a nap in the afternoon. Yes. 15 to 20 minutes. Oh, 15, 20 minutes. Do you put the timer on the phone? I put the timer. I have like a, I have, I just listen to like ambient music. Nice. That's for like sleeping. Oh, I love I that. I clear my mind. Is that the gigahertz? Like the four, you know, there's a certain uh, tone that's supposed yeah, to. Like, I mean, all that stuff's great. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. experiment. Or like, but to me, I just like Spa. For, for sleeping. Yeah. I've heard that like taking a nap in the afternoon is like one of the best things you can do. And like, I always have a better day afterwards. Like, S- like if I take the nap and yeah. I don't try to like shove too much stuff in there, I will get done what needs to get done because then I'm like reinvigorated. Oh, dude, everything. 20 the, minutes. The brain, they, they say, like, it's coming out, like, how important sleep is. And being a stand-up comic, you know, I've been running it late, hardcore for years. So now, during the pandemic, you know, I kind of leaned into acting, and I didn't go out as much. So I'm glad I caught up with the last sleep that I was denying myself because it does age the brain. Like, you got to just... You gotta shut the map. You gotta shut the MacBook yeah. down. You gotta shut it down to make it last. I 
really, really try to do eight. Eight hours every night. Yeah, I usually do about seven and a half because I always am dilly dallying right at the end. But like, I like waking up every day five fifty five during the week and starting my day. Yeah, because it's the only time I have alone. Mm-hmm. Also, so uh, yeah. So you're getting you're going to bed early, and getting up early. If I can get to bed by ten, it's sick. Sick. I love and a good I'm, ten o'clock. I'm trying to read more than that. That's the other problem. So I'm like behind on reading. So I'm like, I have to at least ingest a chapter. And reading before bed is so dope because you're off the internet. Nothing's worse than just like jamming some internet and then trying to jump into bed because you're programming during sleep. You're really programming your subconscious. Yeah. And so what they say is like, that's when you should write. That's when I, you know, do some mantras um, you know, I just go to try to mantra. I'm trying to reprogram my subconscious. So when I wake up into the universe, I get to do cool shit like this podcast with my yeah, man. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Boom. That's a way to do the out. Is that the out? No, that's it. No, no. <laughs> I just like giving you a pound. I'm just psyched about life and psyched about uh, you being here. And I'm psyched that you did this book, man. Uh, and you're hustling it. You're out here. You just flew out here. Uh, are you excited about getting this done? You've been working on this book for like five years. Yeah. No. Uh, our our lit agent actually, uh, Daniel Greenberg. Shout out. Um, I'm, gonna put, I'm gonna keep it like this. Yeah, that looks cool. Um, he he noted. He goes, "Did you realize we finalized the paperwork on January 6, 2021?" <laughs> oh shit. So I was like, no. Because that was a different. Was that the same year when uh, yeah. Trump jumped in? Yeah, yeah. It was, it January sixth, like, you got your Simon Schuster deal, yeah. and the Capitol almost got overthrown. Yeah, <laughs> by old white wild, dudes. That was a wild day. Wild day, a sad day in America. I, I love America, I love our country, and that. And I'm trying not to make this podcast political, but yeah, f those dudes. Yeah, <laughs> that was not not cool. That was not part of the plan. Someone no, no. A co- yeah, police officer got killed. That shouldn't be happening. Polit- Politics is about keeping the lights on, keeping the things moving, trying to keep war down, trying to keep everything together. Like it's just gotten too Hollywood, man. It's gotten too crazy. It's got politics has gotten Hollywood. Yeah, it's just gotten so ego. The ego's so involved, and I think it's an administrative thing. You know, well, the ego is always there, but I think that the ego is now part of the brand yeah like where you're like yeah being egoed out is like sick yeah and we're just in a wave of that right now and i think that optimistic because it can't it can't sustain forever no i I, I can't imagine it's too painful shit man for the past 40 years ego has been getting crazier Mm because that'll just destroy everything but we're in like a hot like commodification of ego moment I think, but a lot of ego death with mushrooms being legalized. I just think there's a wave. This has never happened before in society, you know. And ego death. I mean, as much as you talk about like meditation or everything, it's all about like something. I was tripping out today. Like everything's illusion because it's always floating. So you're not supposed to like attach your ego to it, or you're going to start to suffer. Yeah. Uh, And now I think. And I'm a regular dude. I only got like 900. I barely got 1,000 on the SAT. If I'm figuring that out, everybody's, you know, slowly figuring. And you are. Everybody I know that eats mushrooms and smokes a little bit of weed and listens to jazz understands uh, uh, the ego is some bullshit. But, yeah, I guess you need a big one to do it in Hollywood. You know, you need a little bit of a big ego to push through, and you need it for politics, too. Sure. So, like, like ego is like... It's, it's here to stay. Yeah. It's not, it's not going to ever die. You can't completely kill it. But the whole, like, you know, this is dark, but, like, the Titanic 2 disaster that happened, like, yeah. that dude who sent them down there was, like, like a smug libertarian. Like he was like, what? No, yeah, no, you, you got to tell me. I know. Was this a ship? Was this where they had their own submarine? Yeah, they had a submarine without windows. A. So you're like, what's the point of going down there? Just going on a VR ride. Yeah. And he was like. And he's like on camera, like joking about dodging like authorities that like want to inspect that shit. He's like, whatever, you don't know anything. Yeah, yeah, you can't tell me what to do. They they, they know some shit. No, things should be regulated. Weed should be regulated. I'm pro America, man. Yeah, I I, I think a a level of like regulation from a perspective of like public health. 
yeah. is like important but people don't think that's important anymore people think like that's no we should be and everything like- think everybody thinks government's uh evil and it's not like government you need it because to run shit it's that's what i was talking about keeping the lights on keeping the schools th- yeah. like it's it's not this hollywood ego thing it's like just basic shit like yeah don't sell weed with fentanyl in it and don't take a made <laughs> homemade submarine yeah, that's what I mean. Fentanyl's on everything. Like uh, it, those new uh, Narcon kits are everywhere behind bars, which is a good thing. I was just talking to somebody before the show about those Narcon kits because just fentanyl's out there. People are, you know, people are getting into gnarly stuff as they always have. Um, that's what I like about cannabis being regulated here in New York, and I like the legal, uh, government-run. Uh, not that I'm kissing ass to the government. I, yeah, I don't trust the government, all that stuff. But at the same time, I've just been around. I grew up in D.C. I don't believe in conspiracy theories. It's right. just kind of nerds trying to figure it out, making mistakes, and some nefarious people get into power and start making deals. That's yeah. how I've always seen it. Uh, so I think, yeah, you just need shit regulated. I well, think is what I was talking about, the submarine. Yeah, we you do have, need some regulation. Yeah, I believe in regulation. I don't fetishize the government either. I'm not like, oh, the government's going to solve all my problems. problems. Yeah, yeah, same really thing with the church. I genuinely don't believe that. Yeah. Like, they're not going to solve all my problems. And you I, shouldn't think they are, no. I, I don't want to be paying some venture capitalist to walk down a road. <laughs> you know, like, that's what, like, we privatize everything. We're going to be paying yeah. out of it. Forever. Paying for water is bumming me out. Like, how, like... I don't trust tap water in these weird towns, and I'm always looking for spring water. That bums me out. Yeah, the paying for water. Paying for water. And, but you have to do it these days because it, it wasn't regulated well enough, you know? And it's not being – and I don't know. That's, now we're starting to talk about super capitalism. So what's super capitalism? Like- uh, controlling water and being able to sell something as natural. It's like, it's like bottling air. You know, yeah. it's like that's when it starts to get a little tricky, you know, yeah. well, but I do, do believe in capitalism and I do believe in competition, you know, sure. And art is definitely like I, I want, but I, I, I'm looking forward to like a Star Trek future. Me too. That's how Star Trek was. I mean, I'm sure they had they had a the, their system was for mutual benefit. Like they've changed humanity after some huge war. Wow. That's what happened. Nice. And then like there was like. And then they became like kind of space hippies. Like they had weapons and shit. But on their planet, like they figured everything out. And then they were like, yo, let's get in the car and check some shit out. Right. We're bringing Spock. We're bringing our smartest dude with us. We got Captain Kirk. They were, yeah, they were literally like sailing a ship into like how America kind of got discovered. <laughs> <laughs> Because there's always something, man. There's all, you, that's why you got to be respectful and nice. But they're not trying to, I, I mean, maybe they're not trying. I mean, they were accused in the show of being like, uh, not the original show. But they weren't colonizing. The, uh, colonizing. I know where you're but going. They weren't I know where you're going. They were going. like, no, you got to leave that one alone. Yeah, they were just checking shit out. They had like rules. It's like, then you introduce yourself. Yes. Like, and so they would introduce themselves and be cool and be like, this is who we are. Like, figure it out for yourself. And you can join us. But yeah, because it was it's a like television show, there had to be a drama a twist right. for them to hang out and do some shit at Star Trek, right? Yeah. You got a great sci-fi mind. Are you right? Have you written a sci-fi movie? No. I have, have you I read have, Dune? I have, I have, have you watched Dune? Dune's hard. <laughs> I know. That is like, a, I, I'm like, not at that it's, level. Like it's a hard, it's, but it's so, the, the prose is so like not exciting to me. Like J.R. Token, Token yeah. has Token. pros. Yeah, like as much. I'm like I, but I like the Hobbit better than the than the other ones. It's like the lyrics. One, there's too many. There's too many elf songs. I was like, there's another elf song, and I couldn't understand what they were talking about. Yeah, like I'm like, is this is this important information? I'm like reading it again. Like, what is this elf song about? Am I just supposed to blow by it? Yeah, you know. So I didn't. I didn't. I couldn't visualize the 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 more popular trilogy, but The Hobbit was sick. Dude, The Hobbit's, yeah, I, that's where my mind was going. The Hobbit is sick because it's just like, yo, all these tribes are getting together and then we're taking on this dragon. Isn't that what happens? Yeah. And, and then they get the gold because he hits the right little part of the dragon, right? Right. And uh, Bilbo Baggins, what did he shoot? Did he have an arrow or did he do a slingshot? He had the invisible ring. Was it? But how did he kill a dragon? But that ring is the later thing. How did he kill a dragon with the ring? I think he sh- 
He didn't kill him with the ring, but he had the invisibility ring. Oh, yeah. To but go that, into that, the but, lair. But that ring ended up being the most important ring ever. I know. That's what Gollum wanted. It. Yeah. Was Gollum in the Hobbit? Gollum was in the Hobbit for a second, wasn't he? I had yeah, the, yeah, I yeah, had yeah, the yeah, Hobbit. Yeah, yeah. I had the album. And I watched the movie. Great he animation. Meets Gollum tricks him out of his ring. Yes, that's what it and was. Then has the ring, and so Gollum just disappears. Yes, he's out. But like then, he, and then he comes back in, in the, Lord in Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, the two towers. Two towers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Too many Elvis songs. Though. That was like I got in an argument with a guy in college over that. I'm like, it was before the movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I was like, too many Elf songs. He's like, well, you don't like Elf songs. <laughs> I love Vonnegut, Kurt Vonnegut. That was that was like the sci-fi I loved because he's like incredibly funny. Yes, and nobody could do that. No one else like in sci-fi had the concept in the prose like Vonnegut. I know and that's I, like by a mile. I yeah, wow, Kurt Vonnegut. I always thought he did. He also did non-sci-fi, right? He had, or was everything's in the future? He had a couple of books of essays. Yeah, no, that's he, what I remember. What naked? He, what? he didn't have any. F- Fiction, to my knowledge, he did not have any fiction that wasn't sci-fi, but he also was like a brilliant essayist, right? Well. And that was like different. But he had a good. He, can you hear me? Yeah, I got it better he now. He had a good um, just philosophy on writing, which is like simplicity. What was it? Yeah, tell me what you got out of it because I like hearing about writing, and I love writing books, and I'm writing a script right now. Uh, actually about jazz musicians. So, uh, what about writing? I don't know. If this what is you got from, what was the tip from Vonnegut? Like what was, oh, he's doing just that. Write, just don't get abandoned pretense. Okay. Like, yes. and like, like you don't have to be overly wordy, you know, be as simple, like try to be as minimalist as possible. Like yes. minimalism is a good thing. It is. Because it helps you reach the idea. And I think in my younger age, I was a maximalist in art. And that's why I didn't do anything. Yes. I was just like, this is everything, 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 everything. Like Lauren Hill is like, I produced, I wrote, I did everything on that one album. That's why she has one album. Yeah. Because it's like a lot of people made that album. Like she did like the lion's share, but it, like she, you know, artistically, but like it takes like a village to, to make some shit. Yeah, like, totally. When, you, when, you have, when you're a maximalist. But when you're a minimalist, you can, you can try your, you can do it yourself. Yeah, it's like you know? whether you play in a band or you're acoustic guitarist, acoustic guitarist can make it funky. Just like this podcast, but I'm having trouble being on a minimalist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my over camera overheated on Dan. We're shooting this on my phone, but it looks nice. Uh, minimalism. Minimalism. I also I don't know. And then maximum. I, I just to, on your point, like you, are, you, the creative mind. If you're a hyperactive kid with a super creative mind, it's hard to grasp getting the task done because it starts to go, wow, you know, it starts to. Yeah. But Kurt is teaching you to, Vonnegut is teaching you, hey, just slow down and let's go from sentence to sentence. And that's what I'm learning with being mindful as well. Like, yeah. Is like whenever I'm feeling anxiety and bummed out and, I'm like, uh, and then I'm like, oh, what am I doing right now? I'm perfectly safe. I'm perfectly fine. Yeah. Some other shit will work out, you know. Uh, and uh, just kid, I guess the minimalism is just being right now. But that's that's yeah. what I always found tricky was with stand up like we and being creative like you part of it is getting the mind to run. Yeah. No, I know. Like thinking really big and trying the puzzle is great. You know, like I have things I'm actually working on and then I have things that I'm like kicking around in my brain because I don't know if it's too big yeah, and if it's right and if I want to commit to it. That's also a thing. Before yeah, I start totally. It's just like, do, okay, I like this idea. I like it. Do, do I want to commit to it? Do I want to go all in? I want to go all in. Like you and Eric went all in on your television show and all in on your book. And yet, in order to make something, after a while, if you've been around art or creative stuff, like you understand, even if it's the littlest little movie or, you know, social media thing, you got to focus and you got to go all in yeah. sometimes if you want to make it tight. Yeah. I, and I'm jealous of people who are like prolific. 
you know like, yeah i could like i wish i was more prolific and i'm trying to be and that's sort of like it's like get Same. things done i just have i just have like just <laughs> i've only released i've been doing stand-up 20 years i've only released two stand-up albums you know yeah we like one every 10 years it has been you know, because I get my head around it, and but now everybody's doing a special every six months, every three months, and you see it. I don't know. There, you know, I'm a different. T you know, everybody works in different ways, and comparing people does steal the joy. But yeah, being part of the process is like you want to be more prolific, but you just don't want. So, but then there comes a point being prolific, or you're just running your mouth, or you're just doing right. shoddy bullshit. To you know what me, I'm saying? To me, it's just using my time better and yes. i'm getting better at it it's but it's time management where i'm just like i want to do this thing but i still have to finish this other thing yeah so things get you know pushed but i mean i have i have like a, a script i'm working on with somebody you know yamanika yeah she's great she's great she's hilarious we have, we have something that's like you hit me to it i want to I, well, i'm not i'm not gonna we're, we're hit close, you up we're close to getting it to like a workable play it, it, we get it it's done but it's like there's things in the middle that I need to be just ironed out, but uh, but that's another see, thing. I want to get that out. I yeah. want like, and then then I can't I can't do anything until at least that's out. Yes, because I'm just like that has to be not even out. Like, but just are we going to do this or not? Yes, place. And, and it takes a and script. And that and that takes. Well, yeah, we have the out. We're do, I'm writing an. I like write an outline now before a script mm -hmm. because I find that. Um, it's a process, but it's when I write the jokes as I go, what happens is I get trapped by jokes. Yep. And then you like the logic of the, the of the story has to come first. Always. Always. Like I always like have to know where I'm ending. And like so I know know where I begin, know where I end, put up the architecture and then write the jokes. Because then the jokes are, you, you know your constraints. Yes. Like, you can't just go out. Because it doesn't, because then you're just like. You, you don't know, know where you, it's going. You don't know where it's going. So you end up being random searching for things. And that's why, that's like the, the secret of every, every script I never finished. Mm -hmm. Was I was just trying to like start and finish. Yeah. That, I, that's and I was the, just like, I'm just going to figure it out as I go. And it's like, none of that shit. I learned how to write dialogue doing that, mm -hmm. which is a good skill it is a good skill but i didn't learn how to like write a script <laughs> <laughs> you know they, uh, they say in hollywood like yeah everybody that's trying to do everybody's got a half written script like every yeah. it, it's just a part of it but the key to writing a script is finishing it but what you're saying yeah i love the bookend i uh, that's what i say about this podcast like i like to get some b-roll to but you got to bookend your project like, with you know where did it it's capsulated it's almost like a cliche like like the writer, the, the mystery no writer who doesn't know how he's going to finish his novel. Yeah. It's like, why'd you write it? <laughs> yeah. You know, you don't know where you're going. Why you're, am I listening you're, you're to you? You're fucking meandering your way here. It's just like, you got to know yep. what you want to say. I think, I think you have to know what you have to want to say at the end. So it's like, I would write the beginning and then the end. I always, when I do write, I also, when I write a script, I write act one first, then act three, then act two. Nice. There's that, a tip. Because the one and three, this is so boring. <laughs> not, We're going to switch to music right after but this. But like if you write them back to back, then you remember the exact yes. feelings. Like the feelings are just so tight to each other. Like, oh, you did this? Oh, this is the resolution. Yes. You know, now we're resolving this thing from act one. And now it's a and complete thing. Yeah. That's then a, you get it. Then act two, Yeah. you're just on your way there it's like the graffiti artist when you go out you got to do the bubble letters first right and then you do the fill-in that's when you get your other paint and you buff it out yeah. that's your act two your act act one and your act three is you know the complete piece yeah act, and then you go act two you, pop, 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 and then maybe and put you gotta change things on the fly you ever see the warriors yeah it's so clear uh, but you know, their you know, graffiti is not as good as you Beat know, Street. You know when the guy gets thrown into the train? Yeah. Did you notice that in the movie he's the main character until then? Then they just drop him and they pick up another guy? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because that dude wasn't supposed to die there. He was supposed to be the guy at the end. 
and he didn't get along with a director. Yeah, he, he was on this podcast. Thomas Gate, Thomas Waits, Thomas yeah, G. Waits. Did he tell you this story? Yeah, he told me this story, and he's also in the thing. He plays Windows. Oh, he's that guy. Yeah, and he told me he was a young guy, uh, and he saw me open for W. Kamau Bell, and we became friends. And then during the pandemic, I did a Zoom. That's wild that you brought up the one warrior that I know. And he's like a New York City actor. And he had me, he had an acting class. He had me MC at their graduation. Great guy. But yeah, he went in and he was cocky. He said he got this big movie and he was young and he was fighting with the director and said, the movie's, you know, this thing is weird. There's too much violence. What's up with all this violence? And now he says, an older man, he was like, Dude, I should have just shut my mouth and just because that movie was ended up being a cl classic. He made up with the director, but right. yeah, he did get just thrown off into yeah, the train. Don't even talk about it. The rest no, of the no, movie, no, 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 no. Who care? His name like, is Fox, and yeah, he dies. But he's the main character. Yeah, in the, he, in the beginning, yeah, he was supposed like, to roll be the whole. Yeah, that he got the Al Pacino role. I think like Pacino, like everybody was up for that role. That was like back in the day in the seventies. It was like major motion pictures. They'd had like ten on the docket. And so Warriors was one of them. Yeah. So if you were an actor that got that, you were in the dance. The actor who goes, the Warriors yeah. did it. He's the best. The best. I mean, and he's like in the hip hop. He steals the scenes. Yeah. yeah, he stole that scene. And he's in Predator. He's also in uh, uh, Commando. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Commando, he's not a, Predator. He's like a coked up like low level dude he's like one of the first kills he gets how he gets killed they throw a pipe at him right and he gets stuck and the steam comes out oh, of the yeah. pipe no, no no that's a different dude that, oh that that's was like a, a dude. jack dude oh that was a different dude i remember he died he gets thrown he off goes, let hey decker he has a name he goes let off some steam yeah, yeah. Oh. no he's like the jacked <laughs> oh he was the jack he's dude. like the jacked but the Warriors dude gets Sire. thrown off like a cliff, right? He gets oh. Yeah, he's like, what are you going to do? Dude. Throw me off a cliff? He's like, no, the car will do it. I can't remember what happens, but he kills him. And he's like, he's like, a, he's like a coked up dude. Yeah. He's totally. like, yeah, yeah, coked up. He was like the broker who arranged. Like he had something to do with, his, with Alyssa Milano's disappearance. Yeah, yeah. You could just tell this guy is sleazy as they get. And it was the 80s coked up. He just played that. He just played a great... We were talking about character actors uh, with John Hodgman, and yeah, he was like one of those character actors that popped up, and you didn't know his name, but you knew his face and you yeah. knew his voice just as much as you knew De Niro. <laughs> oh yeah, that guy. That guy's. But it's the two things he's in, right? Two things he is, and then the other guy. He just passed. I did a show with him, but he was in Fast Times at Ridgemont High, and he goes, you're, "He delivers." Damone? No, he delivers the pizza. He goes. Judge in, Reinhold. John, Judge Wright, but it's another guy. He's only in like in two scenes, and I did, but he passed actually. He's a, but he was a character actor. But it's like your pizzas. He plays the pizza delivery guy that comes uh, into the classroom with Spicoli, and he's like knocks on. The, and he play, but he does it so well that you remember it. At least I remember. It. I just not great with names and stuff like that. That was the first teenage movie of the eighties, and you know what the last one is? What Heather's? Heather's. After yes, Heather's. It, fell off because Heather's like ended the genre for a while for 10 years yeah and it was uh Heather's was had an edge because it was about a group of girls that killed people <laughs> yeah. yeah no one girl one girl one killed girl. one good girl was the, and she killed all her mean friends like the popular girls yeah, yeah. yeah it was a motif on like the popular kids and the non-popular kids yeah yeah uh, but Spico I, I mean, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, that's definitely one of my favorite films of all time. I like how it's shot, and it's in California. Doug Benson is in a scene. Do you know that in Fast no. Times? Yeah. Is he a high schooler in it? He's with Damone, and he's over by the arcade when they're selling tickets. Get out of here. Yeah. And there's another, yeah. It's San yeah. Diego, I believe. They, I think they filmed no, it. No, it it's a popular, it might, he's from San Diego, but it's like this mega mall that's in California that everybody knew in the, the 80s. The exteriors of the high school were like Claremont Mesa High. And that's in San Diego? That's in San Diego. Yeah, I think, yeah, and he's from San Diego. Yeah. I, he told me it was like his, he was an extra and ended up getting in these scenes. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damone. Damone. Selling I tickets. Damone. I never saw Earth, Damone Wind, again. and Fire. I uh, know. Damone, and he killed it in that thing. He killed it. He killed it. Yeah, everybody. It, it, Damone had a, even though he was a sleazeball, but there was something cool about him. I, I like that he sold tickets. I always thought, I liked music people. He's also got this great line in the beginning where he goes, uh, first rule when you're with chicks or something. Yeah, goes, yeah. You got to act like 
wherever you are is the greatest place to be. <laughs> and he goes, isn't this great? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck rule is that? That's not a rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That rule makes it doesn't even make sense. Nah. It's like no matter where you nah. are, you this gotta is, act like it's great. Yeah. It's that's, like, no, what, what do you I don't get that. I don't know. I agree with him. You gotta be positive. He's just saying, He's saying being positive. positive and being like, this is the place to be. Damone had some as sleazy as he was, and he stole his guy's girl, but he had some knowledge. And I believe, yeah, if you're with somebody and you're like, yo, this is isn't this, you know, Burger King cool? Act like it's but that it, you know, it is false. I do understand that. But I always liked that he sang Cheap Trick. He's like, Mommy's all right. Your daddy's all He's trying to sell the tickets. He's all right with me. <laughs> Surrender. Did he Surrender. sell Van Halen tickets? And yeah, Van Halen was going by the Van arcade. Van Halen? Yeah. I think about Van what Halen. What about live music? Oh, th- go ahead. So, tell me about Van Halen. Because I follow. Uh, I love Van Halen. I follow, early Van Halen. I, I follow love. Sammy Hagar on. Uh, <laughs> he can't stop being famous. No, I know exactly but, what you're talking about. Yeah. He does like he's on every like hotel like, show, like television show. Punk friend, Minutemen didn't like him, but, but they're fine with him. But I mean, but uh, those are California double, punks. Double nickels for, on the dime is about making fun of the song. I can't drive, drive 55. 55. The Red Rock. It was a response. Yes, an out like a double punk album. But I, I like him, and I realized that David Lee Roth ain't talking about love. No. But Sammy Hagar, always talking about love. That was the big difference between the two. And I like... That was in the Howard Stern and I, and interview. I think, yeah. I, oh, is that... I, yeah, he I, talked about... this. Is, yeah, D- David Lee Roth was like, the difference between us is like, I never... I ain't talking about love. And Jump was actually telling the guy to kill himself. Like, it's it really... Jump, jump. Go be, ahead, yeah, jump. go ahead, jump. Go ahead, do it. I don't care. Might as well jump. <laughs> yeah, jump. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so it's more, more about in the 80s, you know, there was a turn for the coldness. And sometimes, you you know, in the Buddhist philosophy, you got to let people do what they do. And if they're going to do something stupid, let them do something stupid. Yeah. Yeah. But Sa- da- Sammy Hagar wants you to fall in love. Yeah. 51, Same, 51. 51. But there was one Sammy Hagar that I really liked. I think Pound Cake might have been. It was, it was something like, I do like a good, cheesy guitar riff. What are your favorite guitar riffs? You um, did send me Ma- Minuteman, but in my terms... My favorite guitar riffs? Like, is it like solos or like rhythm? Rhythm, just something that you're like, like the classic Fugazi. Oh, that's good. That's a bass line. That's a bass line, yeah. But I'm just trying to tap into your, your mind a little bit. What's, what, what sticks to your jam? Um, wow. Like, I could answer this a million different ways. Yeah. Depending on what just popped into my mind. What's the most natural way without any filter? Like, give me a genre. I know genre. What's in there? What's in what? Right now. In my head? In what riff? All right. The riff that came into my head yes. right when you said that was the Crosstown Traffic uh, Kazoo guitar. Ooh. What is that? Cross do, down do, 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 do. That's do, Hendrix, do, right? Ah, oh, that is. Do, 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 do. That's the song that made me like understand. I didn't understand Jimi Hendrix after that, but I understood that Jimi Hendrix was good. Wow. Like I was a kid. Yeah, but and, yeah. like that, like they made like someone shot a video for it, like after the fact, and it wasn't, and it was just like, and it, it was, was filters it was, it was, and traffic. Yeah, it, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, and I was like, and I saw that. It was like on PBS. Yeah, I remember. It was, like, this. Remember the 60s? I'm like, nope. No. Nope. Not my time. <laughs> and I watched it, though, and I was like, oh, that song's sick. Sick. Oh, now I know when I hear, like, now I know who Jimi Hendrix is. Yeah. He was playing, I mean, he was the first guy to do drum loops backwards and mess with audio recording and mess with distortion. You know, I, 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 the last couple of episodes I played with my Roland beat machine and messing with the echo. You know, a lot of just like, uh, you know, we're just playing with the energy, brah. And the, it, the fire department's here. Oh, the fire department's here. You should get that on tape. Okay. <laughs> but, I mean, we, we're at 42 minutes, and we got right, two. Well, we got the fire, the fire could, department here. This, this episode is so hot that it's the uh, fire department's here. You got to see this. Okay. What um, is this? Um, now it's, yeah. Is that a good angle? Yeah, that's a, it's a new building. It's just Brooklyn. The guys across the street are checking something out. All right. Um, it was exciting. It's, it's always exciting. This is kind of a lot. Are you intimidated? Because it's not like we just kind of have this venue to ourselves. 
in the cafe, they have great coffee. Shout out to Sha- Shapeshifter Cafe. Shapeshifter Lab. Shapeshifter Lab. Dan, I don't want to. I don't want to take you too long. I know you. You. You traveled. You be, were up oh, doing like radio all day. Yeah. You're jet lagged. You're about to smack me. So we'll end it up. What about your favorite? Uh, first, dumb ideas, but not to be capitalistic. But yeah, dumb ideas. The book. Get this. It looks so dope. Uh, it, the font's sick. I promise the you, it's funny. Sick. Everybody the that word. I, everybody I hit bad trip movie f- to, and I like I'm talking like my older brother, the most mainstream cats that didn't know anything about it, loved it. These guys are some. I'm I'm I love being these guys' friends, but no, these guys both inspire me art and comedy wise. Check out dumb ideas. Check out dumb ideas. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for having me on. What's your favorite punk rock uh, riff? Uh, Nervous breakdown. Uh, Greg Ginn, Black Flag. You Keep like that California. Nah, 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 yeah, nah, nah. Like, cause it's like. There's California like, punk. California punk. That's what. Do you think that's the best? Yeah, there was the. It's what, got, it's what truly got me into punk. You okay, love like, the Minutemen. He loves the Minutemen. In seventh grade, someone let me borrow the dead milkman. I was like, oh, this is great. Yeah. You know, so it, it was the gateway drug, the dead milkman. For a lot of people, it is. Totally. Like, but people don't talk about it because they're kind of they're kind of dorky, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, but it's iconic. That some, album they got cover. Some good shit. So, but then eighth grade came Black Flag in the Misfits. Yeah. Through skate culture, like, and I wasn't. I mean, I wasn't a skater. I hung out with skaters. Yeah. Because I like this, I dug the style, but I, I don't. I, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not very good on a skateboard. But skating had good art. I like their art and yeah. their style. And, and some music, they had seven seconds, all this shit was they were pumping. That all like turned me out. And then in my high school, everyone became a hippie, but I did not. Yeah, I remember we had deep conversations. He's anti Grateful Dead. I'm not anti Grateful Dead. I'm anti. I thought it was a. Com- I, I I called it for what it was in high school, and, yeah. it, and I did not gain friends from this. But I thought it was like. I don't know if I articulated it like this, but it was. It's by the time the '90s rolled around, it was a commodification. Of a con, like of an old time, of a concept of the. So 60s. it's like the '60s is you are not the standard bearers to like the philosophical undertones. This is like the darkness. <laughs> yeah. This is like the capitalistic, <laughs> yeah, way of making money and, and peace it's and fine. love. It's fine, like yeah. you know, do do a thing, like but it's like I didn't buy it. Yeah, and I always felt. You were a punk rock kid. That's and all. I talked to some of my friends about it. Like just recently, I've, I've been talking about it again. Like yeah. out of the blue, because I'm just like because the Grateful Dead are people digging it again because it's so authentic. Right. I can oh, I can argue I, I can argue with you, and I I used to make fun of the Grateful Dead and stuff. But as I've gotten older and understand history, but I understand where you're totally coming from. But uh, and then let you more punk. What's that? And then, but I, but I don't want to go too deep into whether the Grateful Dead is good or bad. No, I more want to go pot. They're not yeah. bad. Okay, I, I, good. I, I genuine, I genuinely, I've been sold on the concept that it is a, it is art. Yes, it is. But and, you hated and, and fish. It's very real. Yeah. It's, it's complex. Yeah. Fish. I have a lot of friends who love fish. Yeah, because you were from all, up that's here. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. I got a lot of friends who love fish. Yeah. But I take the dead over fish. Anyway, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I do too. I do too. But I love them all. Like everybody has their jams. I've just not have been as tribal with my art. Uh, but in my younger days, I definitely were. We were. But is that are kids still tribal no. about their art? Like we were. Not at all. That's what I was talking to John Hodgman about. The internet is like everybody's just open to everything, and what you listen to isn't a part of your facade personality anymore. Oh yeah, that's what it was, and it, it meant a lot. Yeah, it kind of meant where you stood and how you viewed things, and I think it still does. I still think if you listen to classy stuff, like you sent me a playlist that I still love to this day that, yeah, one of them was a Minutemen song. It was the sketches in a notebook he ran. Oh, yeah, about. yeah, 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 and then, yeah. But then Shit there was, so, yeah, then there was like some Brazilian jazz and some heavy. I know you know music so well. I don't know. I like what I like. I actually spin out on like 20 songs. Yeah, I know. For, for like a chunk of time. And I can't break out of like those songs. I have to force myself to like listen to new stuff because I don't want to any. Like I, like, I know, I, I know. I, As you get older, you start to cut it all but off. I, I do force myself to listen to new stuff, and there is cool shit happening. There's cool, but then when I fi- then I find something, then that just becomes one of the twenty songs. Did you ever get into Turnstile? Have you heard any Turnstile? No. Have you heard Angel Dust? These are the new punk rock bands that I like. No, I listened to uh, Amol and the Snippers though. 
Oh, I've heard of her. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's She's great. Australian, right? It's an Australian. The Bobby Lee's are good too. Oh, nice. Yeah, you know who the Bobby Lee's are. I have it. No, I know who Bobby they're Lee, not. the comedian, is, but I don't. Well, they're, know. Not. They're, they're not. Based not. on him. <laughs> based on him, good. Uh, but I'll check them out. I'll definitely check them out. But uh, yeah, Dan, you've been too cool. Anything else you want to tell the good people of the internet world out there of the Cannabis Coffee Hour? Peace. Um. <laughs> and love. That's it. Peace and love. And uh, be cool. Be nice to your mother. True. Be nice to your family. True. Be nice to each other. True. Right. Unless they're dicks, but then you know, let it slide. No, if they're dicks. You just, you just, you can just fucking get away from them. Get away from dicks. Yeah, that's the move. My move is yeah, don't, don't confront. Run. <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or just get out of Dodge. Deflate, deflate the ego. Deflate the ego because your ego gets tied up in theirs and then all of a sudden nothing gets solved. Nothing gets solved. But all right. This is the end. Peace. Thank you.